and we are back today with a Beamer. We have the 218i Grand Coupe in front of us in the Misano Blue Metallic, which is this cool blue color. And I've basically just found the last bit of shade to take this video because it's a 33 degree day and it's boiling. But anyway, let's get right into it. We're just gonna go through the engine first and then we'll walk through around it. So you walk in and you've got, it says here, it's quite funny, it says twin power turbo. Um, don't be fooled, it's not a twin turbo. It's a single turbo. It's a 1.5 liter three cylinder turbo, which is tiny because this is the entry level. It's got 103 kilowatts of power and 220 newton meters of torque. And BMW basically says that it'll do zero to 100 in 8.7 seconds, which isn't the best, but it isn't the worst. Um, because this is the M Sport package, it looks a lot quicker than it actually is. So the M Sport package basically, basically gets the M aerodynamics package, M leather steering and M Sport suspension, which is lowered by 10 millimeters. And we'll get into that when we go around. So at the front, you've got the one piece grill. That's all one piece together. And you've got the sensors down below and really cool bodywork underneath. Then you've got the BMW LED lights, which are actually really cool and really bright. And high beams are just so insanely bright. And then you've got the M aerodynamics package, which just feeds some air through around the car. Now, because this is the M, you've got M Sport, not the M. <laughs> you've got M badging. And it also gets these 19 inch M light wheels which are bicolored jet black, they call it something like that. So they're 235, 35 R19s. So they're 19s as opposed to the uh, 18s that the normal non-M Sport would get. Basically because they're firmer, they've got what, 10 millimeter lower suspension. It is a firmer ride. It is a bit more connected to the road as you're driving it compared to the 18s, but it can get a bit bumpy. So here it is, we're just gonna go around. We've got a bit of sun coming the bi-color jet black wheels and then the Misano blue metallic. So it's a blue metallic color. And then you've got more aerodynamics coming here from the M Sport. Air coming through there, whether it actually does anything is another question. And the sort of bottom uh, diffuser, if you want to call it, which probably does nothing as well, very likely. Then you've got the cool two series Grand Coupe lights and also this black line here, which basically BMW said, we're trying to make it look lower and more aggressive. So what they're going for here is basically a one series with a sedan because it's similar dimensions to the one series. Um, but basically they want to make it look a bit more aggressive like the old two series. And it actually is 4,500 millimeters long and 1,800 millimeters wide. So it's very similar dimensions to the old E46 three series, which is maybe what they're going for here, trying to re-enliven the, the old three series. So we're going to the boot. You've got your camera there. There's 430 liters of boot space, which you can see there. And it also opens up. So I've got a bit of sun glare, but basically you can open this up and you can lower it. If you do want to fit a pram or something else, you can actually just increase the depth of the boot to go a bit lower, but it is quite a decent boot. The, it's bigger than the one series, but smaller than the three series, as you would expect, because it's a two series. <laughs> and there are your continental wheels again. Inside you have cloth trigon slash sensor tech black which is actually pretty cool so you've got these triangles all around this car which are it sort of looks leather but it's just trim it's cloth inside you've got a decent amount of space and they're actually really comfy seats they can sit in them for a while the back because it is a coupe it goes down your head might be hitting at the back um if you've got a couple tall people in there but generally it is quite good then you have two usb-c ports down there for charging, which are pretty decent because they're fast chargers, uh, but you will need an adapter if you have got the old USB 2.0 cables. And here is your armrest, which you just fling that down and there are your cup holders, which are not too bad. There it is. Now we're gonna go to the front. And here are your, you've got six speakers on the inside. 
um, 100 watts, so it's not not the best system. Here are your wheel, your uh, not your wheels, your seats again, which are super comfy on the front. They actually say that the front seats are a bit sportier. Uh, what's the exact wording that they use for it? Basically, saying that the sports seats for driver and front passenger. So if you want to call that sports seats, there you go. But they are they are quite comfy, and because they're not bucket seats, they're not incredibly uncomfortable. Um, then we've got down below. Oh, there's just a car leaving. The ability el electronic moving for the seats. We'll go around to the front as well. On the inside, you've got a 10.25 inch infotainment system, which is huge and it can do car play, which is great. Then you've got seat heating for the two front seats and the passenger seat. And there is your wireless charger there, which you can just let your phone charge. And a USB port, two bottle holders, and your 12 volt adapter. This is also a sort of joy, a joy pad, a joystick, which controls the infotainment system, although it's touchscreen. So you basically, it can get a bit frustrating controlling it, but you get used to it. But I would just prefer to use the touch screen because it's a lot easier. Inside, you've got a little storage compartment here and another USB-C port for charging in there. So I guess once everyone starts adapting to USB-C, that'll make things a lot easier. And a little storage compartment here with a little light with my rubbish in it. Apologies for that. Okay, um, now we're just gonna go around to the driver's side. Now, we, because we have the enhancement package here, that costs 2,900 bucks, almost three grand for the enhancement pack, which basically gets your 19 inch wheels down there as opposed to the 18s, your panoramic glass roof. So we'll go over the top so you can see that. That's a full sunroof as well, so it can open and your metallic paintwork. So that's three grand. Then you've got 2,300 bucks for the comfort package which gives you automatic locking and unlocking. It gives you seat heating for the front driver and passenger, not for the back, just for the front. Lumbar support, so you've got the little circle there and electronic seat adjustment as opposed to manual. So that gets, that's an extra 2,300. So this is option with the enhancement and the comfort package. Now the speakers could be better because they're only 100 watts and there's only six of them. You're left feeling like you need a bit more bass in them and a bit more clarity. Whereas the M235 Grand Coupe has six speakers in their heart, oh, sorry, 16 in their Harman Kardon. So they are a lot better as opposed to these. There is your M badging as well again. And here are more seat settings, electronic for your driver. Here is your steering wheel. For your driver, you can control the volume and your cruise control settings. You've got the cruise control and because this has got the extra pack, it can slow down from the car in front. It doesn't have complete emergency stop always it's only in the city at low speeds which is a bit disappointing for safety but it does have a rear cross alert the rear camera is quite good with all the options and it's got blind spot monitor and lane keeping assist um, it could be a bit punchy the engine because it is only a three cylinder it has a decent little noise with the offbeat exhaust but it's only 103 kil kilowatts so it could do better zero to 100 definitely the suspension is quite good it is firm i will admit that it definitely is firm with this package however because it is got the, it has got the better wheels and the better suspension it does feel more tighter and grippier when you're going around corners but because this is a front wheel drive car the quicker you take it the more you're going to feel torque steer and understeer which does happen um, you've got 40, 20, 40 folding rear seats. The fuel consumption is claimed to be 5.9 liters per hundred. We tested it. The stop With the stop start, you can get that, but generally you're probably looking at about eight liters per hundred. The stop start is a bit jerky when you're using it, but that's the way stop start is if you do want to use it to save a bit of fuel. Now we're just going to go in and have a look at the cockpit, the digital cockpit, which we will turn on. Now I'm just going to spin and turn on the car so we can get it. Basically, you've got a 10.25 inch display here, a second one. And it's showing me that all the doors are open. And basically, you've got your, your speed over here, your, wow, I've got the aircon really high. Bonnet open, yes, I'm, I'm aware of that. There is your infotainment system. CarPlay is embedded in it. You've got your GPS. You've got a lot of options for your car driver profiles, 
you've got your vehicle status you can change from sport to change sport mode you're going to be oh it's got a bit of a whinge there sport comfort and eco pro there's your start stop there is your shifter to go down to manual as well and here are your radio presets there is your seat heating and your aircon and basically you've got a it's all touch screen here or you can control the job the joy pad or if you go over here then you can just use the digital display here with the speedo i wish the speedo would have been a bit bigger but it's got the, the new bmw display which is a weird sort of c hook shape on the left and the right and then on the front if you can see it on the bonnet is the heads up display so overall it's got a decent amount of features and it only starts at 47,990. The package we have today is 53 because it's got the two upgrades, the comfort and the enhancement pack. But compared to, let's say the CLA 200, the Mercedes, that costs about 60 grand. So it's about 12, 13 grand more. Although it does have a few more features, that is a big difference to get, get yourself in an entry level Beamer that looks as good as this for only 47 is pretty decent, brand new. So we are pretty impressed with how much that you get. Obviously, it could have a bit more power and it could definitely steer a bit better because now BMW is going front wheel with their entry level models. That is something that we're just going to have to get used to as opposed to the rear wheel drive. And I'll just show you there. There's your cool LED lights. They look amazing. So this actually is a really... At, at first, I sort of was a bit skeptical of the car because the back is weird. I'm not sure what they're going for with the Grand Coupe, but I do get they're trying to flatten it, make it look more aggressive to make it sort of stick out more as opposed to just being a boring 2 Series. So they've gone all out with this um, because this is the entry level 218. There is also the M235, which is the sportier version with the four cylinder, two liter engine that does zero to 100 in 4.9 seconds, which is a huge difference. But it's good to have the entry level here under 50K which is quite decent in Australia, that is. And there is the 218i Grand Coupe, which we will be testing and reviewing and posting more videos of it soon. So watch in the description below as they'll be coming out shortly. Please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more videos. Cheers.